Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bueno, darle la bienvenida de verdad a todos los amigos de la India que están hoy día visitándonos, eh, de verdad, para, y de Indonesia. También sé que hay varios amigos visitándonos, de verdad, muchísimas gracias por ello. El, vamos a, tenemos aquí al doctor Aman Choudhury, este, que él viene en representación de cada uno de ustedes a visitarnos el día de hoy. Él es miembro de la Academia de Educación General Mani, Manipal Kar, Karnaka, miembro de la Academia Pierre Fauchar, miembro de la Asociación Internacional de Odontología Forense. Él es eh, profesor en el Departamento de Patología Oral, Microbiología y Odontología Forense de la Facultad de Odontología desde el 16 de junio del 2010. Eh, se dedica a la investigación y al mundo académico a tiempo completo durante los últimos 15 años. Las áreas de interés son odontología forense, fotografía y análisis digitales, genética orofacial, etiopatogenia, bases del mecanismo de la enfermedad, lesiones y afecciones orales, premalignas, metodología de investigación, redacción científica, reconstrucción 3D, revisiones sistemáticas. Es miembro también de la Asociación Dental Americana, miembro de la Asociación Dental India, miembro vitalicio de la Asociación de Patólogos Orales y Maxilofaciales, miembro de la Junta India de Odontología Forense y miembro de la Academia Indo-Pacífica de Odontología Forense. De verdad, para nosotros es un privilegio, doctora Mann, que el día de hoy nos esté acompañando. It's a pleasure to have you here, a privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, you can start? start now, please. Okay, I can start. Mm -hmm. uh, you have disabled screen sharing, actually. Uh, dice start. que le han desactivado eh, el compartir eh, pantalla. No, ya está activado, dile. Está activado. Ahorita lo acabo de activar. It's activated. Everybody can see the screen now? Yes. Okay, Thank uh, you for the subtitles. <laughs> I have tried my best actually to add subtitles so that you don't have to do much of the job, but most of the titles will be in uh, Spanish. So, uh, thank uh, you. Okay. So, um, uh, I am uh, Professor Raman Chaudhary uh, from Jamia Milia Islamia. Thank you for uh, giving a brief introduction about me. My uh, speciality is oral pathology. And uh, today I'll be sharing one of my fashions that is. Uh, forensic facial approximation, which I have been working, say, around four or five years now. A uh, little bit of science, a little bit of art, that's what we will be discussing today. This eh, is él es el, I, so sorry. Eh, él es el, el profesor Aman Chaudhry, especialista en patología oral. Hoy día nos va a enseñar una de sus pasiones, que es eh, la aproximación facial forense, que tiene un poco de ciencia, un poco de arte, y ha tratado de poner subtítulos eh, para los que hablamos español. Ok, this is the team which I work in. You can see uh, uh, Dr. Jasuja, Dr. Dr. Kapoor, Dr. Deepika Pablani, and Jyoti Jetwani, which were actually participants in this presentation. Eh, este es el equipo con el cual él trabaja. Okay, so um, this is uh, the presentation which we'll be working on, and this is a book published by me. I will be sending uh, to one of your library. You will, you can tell me. I will send it, send up one of the copy uh, for your uh, for your reading. Yeah, thank you. Eh, aquí este es el tema que vamos a tratar y es y uh, van, vemos en la esquina derecha un libro publicado por él. Eh, él pregunta dónde nos puede mandar un ejemplar para la biblioteca de Spolfok. This is my training which has been uh, I have been trained in Indian Board of uh, by Indian Board of Forensic Odontology. Yo le voy a dar el correo este a su WhatsApp le voy a dar el correo. Después sí ya le di. Okay. This has been my training. I have, been, I have, uh, I have studied 
forensic odontology from IBFO. Then I took training from Patiala. Then I took training from Chandigarh Central Forensic Laboratory, Science Laboratory. And then I went to Tübingen, Germany under Dr. Osgur Bulut. I did my 3D forensic facial reconstruction. Esto es parte de su entrenamiento. Él ha estudiado odontología forense en la India. Después eh, tuvo un entrenamiento en Patiala. Eh, finalmente, uh, ha eh, hecho trabajos también en Alemania. Ok, uh, I always start my presentation with this, this picture. Why? Because this has, uh, if you see in the top, the ladies, the two ladies which you see, Karen Taylor and uh, uh, that is C. Wilkinson. That, those are the blend of art and science. And down, down you have one of my mentors, that is O.P. Jasuja and Salma Eka from Turkey, which are actually doing a lot of science and art. Because whatever I talk today will be science and art. Okay. Él siempre empieza esta presentación con esta imagen. En la imagen superior vemos a dos, dos señoras eh, que son sus mentoras, ya que siempre le han enseñado sobre arte y ciencia y eso es de lo que vamos a hablar hoy día. So, uh, how did it started? I was a doctor, I was doing my job. Uh, how, how all of a sudden I became uh, an artist? Because, you know, uh, this, this, this speciality is more towards if you do not know, if you do, do, do more of science, you are uh, wrong. If you do more of art, you are wrong. So, uh, it has to be blend of art and science. Okay. Eh, él era un doctor y después se convirtió en artista, porque para eh, trabajar en esta ciencia, bueno, en este, en este tipo de trabajo, tiene que haber una mezcla entre ciencia y arte. Ok, I am very photogenic. You can click my pictures. Try not to upload some picture of a patient or a, uh, or a reconstruction case on a social site. We should respect the dead. Okay. Eh, dice, por favor, eh, tratemos de no subir ninguna imagen que podamos tomar a, la, a, a ningún lado para poder preservar el, el respeto a los muertos. Okay, so what are we going to learn today? What are we going to learn today? We are going to learn uh, osteology, we will learn dental profiling, a little bit of skull profiling, FSTT, then we are going to learn facial reconstruction, and then so much in one hour. Little, little bit, I'm going to talk about each of them, how to go about. Okay. Esto es lo que vamos a aprender hoy. Vamos a hablar un poco de astrología, antropología, de perfil dental, de perfil eh, esquelético. Vamos a hablar un poco de, de el tejido blando de, de la cara, de cómo hacer la reconstrucción facial. Y esos son los temas que vamos a ir abordando poco a poco. So many faces, so many faces, each face is unique. How, you know, that is the basis of biometrics. You will recognize just by the face, 80% of a body in the identification is done just by seeing a face. Cada rostro es único y esa es, esa es la base para estudiar eh, biometría. Now there are around 7 billion, it is, uh, it is a quoted data that there are more than 7 billion uh, cases uh, of faces on the earth, but each of them is a unique one. Now, uh, that's what we use as a reference in verification. That's the basis of biometrics. And human body itself, the face has the maximum number of variables to compare with the other body variables. El cuerpo tiene la mayor cantidad de variables eh, para ser comparada con otro cuerpo. La biométrica se basa en que cada rostro es único. Y por más de que seamos millones y millones de personas en el mundo, no vamos a encontrar otro igual. Now, uh, when, when I talk about face, uh, everybody who has got some science about something or is an artist or an anthropologist, he sees with his own lens. It's the specs which you're wearing. It's a, it's a glass which you're wearing through which you see it. So everybody has different perception about this uh, beautiful science which I'm talking about. So okay. if I'm an oral pathologist, I will look at it as an oral pathologist. If he's an artist, if an archaeologist, if a craniofacial identification, a forensic dentist, they, they all will look at... These are the specialities which the person looks at it. Hello? Marvel? Hello? Doctor, excuse me, one moment, please. No problem, no problem. Marvel. Quizás internet. Ardeme un segundito. 
Marvel. Hi. Eh, Hi se ya. me apagó el micro, no lo podía aprender. Continúa, por favor. Este, cuando nosotros hablamos de, de rostro, vemos de que diferentes eh, dominios científicos tienen una perspectiva. Eh, la antropología física tiene una perspectiva, la antropología forense, los odontólogos forenses. No tenemos una sola, una, un solo concepto de lo que es rostro. Ok. Can you identify? Can you identify? Yes, you can. Surely. Why? Because you have seen the face and you can really say it. The center one is one of the most powerful man ever. Podemos identificar uh, a través del rostro, claro que sí. Por ejemplo, tenemos la cara del medio, que es uno de los hombres más poderosos del mundo. Now, can you identify? Ahora, ¿podemos identificarlo? How about this now? Y ahora. So, the most difficult part is when you get a fragment of a bone and you have to establish the identity. So, if you go back, this, this, and this. The most toughest job is what we are given to identify, to establish an identity from these framework on which the flesh is put. Para establecer la identidad, la, el trabajo más difícil es cuando tenemos un fragmento de hueso. Si tenemos eh, una cara o, o el hueso completo es, es trabajable, pero en caso de un fragmento de hueso es mucho más difícil. Okay, uh, we establish, uh, see, I have added a component of teeth because I have proposed that, uh, you know, for any forensic facial approximation team, a dentist should be part of it because he's knowing a lot about it. Sorry, I, I can hear that. I said that for any forensic facial reconstruction, a forensic odontologist should be included or an opinion should be taken. Okay. Para todas las reconstrucciones faciales, se debe tomar en cuenta a la odontología forense. So, I will not go into the dental identification procedures. My topic is not today for dental identification, but I'll just skip through. You just see the slides for one minute and I'll skip through. You can tell them I'm skipping through the slides. Ah, ok. Eh, no nos va a hablar de los procesos de identificación forense. Eh, podemos ver la... Solo va a pasar las las diapositivas como para recordar que este es el procedimiento que se hace. Ok. Uh, anybody who is doing forensic odontologist, most of you are dentists here, if you are doing forensic odontologist, these are the three things which we do in a dental profiling and that's what we'll be doing in a skull also. Ok. Eh, esto, de, para todos los odontólogos forenses, estos son las, los tres eh, elementos que nosotros hacemos a la hora de la identificación. Establecer la etnia, eh, tratar de estimar eh, la edad y estimar el sexo. Now, you will see that I have, in, a, in one of my articles, I have proposed that the dentist is having the, a lot of skills to really go about doing forensic facial approximation because he is having knowledge of x-rays, CBCT, he knows where the anatomy is, how the musculatures are, what are the growth changes? So he's knowing a lot about it. And that's the reason he is very well suited for this. He knows the material science also. How to use a plaster, how to mix uh, acrylic, how to use, uh, you know, uh, mix uh, substances, etc. In one of my articles, I mention that the odontologists forenses are one of the most hábiles, the ones that have the most stresses for the topic of identification. No solo saben leer radiografías, ven eh, la parte dentaria, sino también tienen práctica con el modelado de, eh, con los moldes que, que hacen. ¿no? So, uh, for, for, for anyone, I have seen a reconstruction happening at your end also. I will just show you a picture also. And I think for, uh, 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 for a dentist, uh, there, is a, there is a column which I put, if you see, dentist is required to place in the team. Uh, blend of art and science, he is established basic procedures of 2D, 3D and collects population data and forms group to collaborate. So these are the features which a dentist is having. And that's what I propose in my article that a dentist should be a part of forensic facial approximation team. Dentro del equipo de aproximación facial forense en su artículo, él ha propuesto que sí o sí se necesita un odontólogo forense. So let's explore the skull first. Uh, bones, growth and development, and facial proportion. That's how you study a skull in this, uh, when you see a skull. So, 
Ok. Eh, cuando vamos a estudiar un esqueleto, eh, primero vamos a ver los huesos, lo, el crecimiento y el desarrollo de estos huesos, y en el caso del de, eh, cráneo, las proporciones faciales. So, uh, we, if we see, uh, you know, the facial bones, the lateral uh, um, uh, view is seen and the frontal view is seen here. There are eight cranial bones that are there and there are 14 facial bones. So if you add 14 plus eight, that is around uh, 20, 22. That's, that's what, are, there are paired bones, there are unpaired bones. So we, we can do that, but, but what you have to keep in mind that eight cranial bones are uh, frontal, parietal, uh, temporal, occipital, sphenoidal, ethmoidal, and then in the, why, why am I enumerating all these is that you should be pit pat when you, you should be able to feel them. Tactile thing should be there. You will, if they are fragmented and presented, you should be able to identify. Okay. Yeah. Eh, cuando hacemos el análisis óseo, vemos en esta vista lateral y vista anterior de que en un, tenemos un total de 22 huesos. ¿Por qué el doctor nos los menciona eh, nombre por nombre? Porque nosotros debemos ser capaces de poder sentirlos, saber si hay uh, algún problema, alguna fractura o, o algo por el estilo y saber qué hueso es dentro de la cara. So I, I, am, I, I know many of you are uh, educated in the same field. Uh, growth and development might be uh, for a layman it is the same, but for us it is, if you talk about growth, it is uh, increase in size, whereas uh, if you talk about development, mm -hmm. it is changing and becoming more advanced. So there is a difference between growth and development. Just increase in size does not mean that, you know, you have not become advanced. You can grow in mass, even a tumor grows with mass. That doesn't mean it is having development. Development is organized increase in size. So develop, growth and development is important for a doctor or a person who's uh, uh, developing to understand because you might get the picture or a thing of a different age and you might have to reconstruct do on a, different age. So you should keep in mind that also. Okay. Tenemos que tener en cuenta la diferencia entre desarrollo y crecimiento. En el crecimiento hablamos de un aumento de tamaño, mientras que en el caso de desarrollo hablamos de los cambios eh, a medida que va avanzando el tiempo. Entonces, eh, cuando queremos eh, evaluar las aproximaciones faciales, tenemos que tener en cuenta ambas cosas y que son diferentes. Uh... A pediatrician is knowing well about growth and development. I'm not going, not uh, telling you to really go about reading, but I'm just telling you involve as many people as possible. Take opinions from as many as people, especially pediatrician, orthodontist, um, a, a craniofacial expert, or a or a 3D animation or a 3D person should be involved. So take help from everyone when you are doing a work. Okay. Uh... La idea es tener la mayor cantidad de opiniones posibles. Por ejemplo, en la tabla anterior nos mostraba eh, cómo es el crecimiento para un, un pediatra. Entonces, podríamos hablar con un odontólogo pediatra, podríamos hablar con un animador de, en 3D, todos los que nos puedan ayudar para estas reconstrucciones. Now, uh, if you if you see that, you know, uh, growth, the, the cephalocaudal gradient of growth, you have to keep in mind that head takes up around 50% of the total body length in the second month of fetal life, 30% at the birth and the 12% at the total body length. So you would see the proportions changing, such a huge face and small body, then smaller, 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 and you have the proportions which are different. So at 25, you are almost 12% of the total body, body length. Okay. Your face is 12% of the body length. Uh -huh. Con respecto a la cara, podemos darnos cuenta en esta tabla que al inicio eh, la cara, por ejemplo, en este feto llega a ser prácticamente el 50%, mientras que va avanzando los años y la proporción que hay entre la cara y el resto del cuerpo eh, va, va achicándose. Entonces, por ejemplo, cuando ya tenemos 25 años de edad, esta proporción llega a ser eh, la cara, el 12% del cuerpo. These are the, uh, I can go on on diagrams, beautiful diagrams, be beautiful people have worked, especially in the Europe, when, pe when uh, you know, it was forbidden to really work on bodies, people uh, secretly worked and uh, you know about Leonardo da Vinci, you know about various scientists who have really uh, 
put their life in threat and really develop science. Eh, él podría seguir con muchas imágenes hermosas eh, de muchos autores que han dedicado su vida a, a graficar estas diferencias. Now this is the changes, changing of facial proportions. If you see the, uh, if I draw a face, if I put the, the maximum part on the down, then it becomes a, a very young face. The moment I start shifting it up, it starts becoming an adult face. Aquí podemos ver la comparación. Por ejemplo, eh, del lado izquierdo tenemos la, el cráneo de un, de un, de, de un niño o de un eh, feto. Entonces, eh, al otro lado, al lado derecho, tenemos el cráneo de un adulto. Si nosotros cambiamos y, la posición y levantamos un poco eh, el mentón, nos damos cuenta de que esta, este cambio de dirección y proporción del crecimiento nos da el del adulto. Tenemos que tener en cuenta este, esta comparación. So you see the growth, now growth is downward and forward for, a, for, a, for any infant to adult. That's what you have to keep in mind when you are uh, doing the reconstruction because you might get an X-ray or a CBCT, which is of seven years of age when he was lost. He was lost at 12. And when you find the body, it is, might be at 25. So uh, you have to keep in brain, you know, that this is how the growth took place. It might not match with what data you get. Data is never given like, you know, uh, it is, I am, uh, you know, it, it, is it is never given stat. It is always given uh, uh, on, on how the, Uh, it is collected from a dentist or a, or, or a person where he got it done. En esta imagen podemos ver mejor que el crecimiento de, del cráneo eh, se da sobre todo en la parte inferior. Y eso es algo que tenemos que tener en cuenta porque probablemente vamos a querer pedir eh, rayos X y de repente se podrían comparar con el crecimiento, los rayos X de, de niños versus el del adulto y el crecimiento es inferior del cráneo. You have to keep in mind there are appliances available, an orthodontist, like if you see this is a headgear which is there, if an orthodontist is in our group, he will be knowing that, you know, how it goes about. Uh, this is, uh, you should know about herbs, appliance, you should know about MARA, that is uh, mandibular anterior repositioning uh, appliance. I hope you are able to pronounce it. MARA and herbs appliance about uh, orthodontist, which he puts to have the growth of the lower mandible forward or a upper mandible forward. Uh, braces are fitted so that he can he can modify the growth. Okay. Aquí podemos ver un aparato de ortodoncia que, por ejemplo, eh, se usa para el tratamiento de, de para el prognatismo que impide de que el crecimiento de, del maxilar sea hacia adelante y esto controla todo todo el crecimiento y modifica el crecimiento estimado para esta persona. I'm uh, again and again talking about proportions and growth because uh, you might have to use them when you are uh, doing it and an orthodontist is well equipped to do such a thing there is something some study called as bolton's this is Bro bolton's brush technique uh, now this was developed there are other techniques also to really go about knowing how the growth and development might have happened because the picture which uh, of the victim which is given or a person who has died might be of very young and you have to really match and develop of how he had would have been when he would have grown Ok. Eh, nos sigue hablando de proporciones y crecimiento, eh, ya que tenemos que tenerlo en cuenta. Por ejemplo, si estamos buscando a alguien que desapareció de niño, tenemos que hacer la proyección en nuestra mente de cómo pudo haber sido ese crecimiento hasta el adulto. Aquí eh, él nos va a enseñar el método de Bolton Brush, ya que eso es lo que eh, es parte del estudio de aproximación facial forense. Ok. Uh... Now, uh, maximum thing, now when we are uh, studying, I will talk about the, the, the skull I'll talk about. But you should know that we have flesh on it. We have a framework and then we have flesh on it. So how to put that flesh, how to know that flesh, that thickness of that is specific. Like if I talk about Peru, uh, mm -hmm. the average height might be six feet. In, in my country, average height is around five feet, five inches. So proportionately the face is there, how, what kind of a face is there, and how much will be the thickness of the tissue. Yeah. 
Eh, para examinar lo que es la, la, la aproximación facial, eh, tenemos que tener en cuenta de que hay un grosor del tejido blando que está adherido a los huesos eh, y este grosor no va a ser constante. Por ejemplo, en, en Perú eh, miden aproximadamente 6 pies, mientras que allá en, en su país miden 5 pies y medio. Y eso no, no da un valor constante al grosor del tejido blando que está sobre el tejido, sobre el cráneo. Ah, uh, keep that in mind. You know, uh, when we do a reconstruction, this is uh, this is manual one. We have around 10 and 10 central points and uh, 10, uh, 11 lateral points which are there. This is for manual reconstruction when you do. Uh, but for a 3D reconstruction, we have a different concept. Okay. Eh, los puntos que nos está enseñando son para reconstrucción manual. Eh, que son 10 anteriores y 11 laterales. And for this, I recommend a book named Karen Taylor's book uh, for uh, reconstruction on 2D. He, she's a very, that book is very simple to really follow. Uh, I, if you see, I had shown a picture of Karen Taylor right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Ok. Eh, él recomienda un libro de Karen Taylor eh, para la reconstrucción facial, que es bastante didáctico y entendible. So, uh, if you want, I'm, I'm doing a study uh, on uh, this, uh, knowing the thickness or at different points and uh, in various classes of malocclusion, like class one, class two, class three malocclusion, I'm trying to know the thickness at various points, these points which are there, these uh, central points. You should have data for your own country because if you do not have data, you will not be able to do reconstruction. Uh, like uh, uh, you have data for... Uh, uh, American population, then South American, you can have European, they all vary, especially if you are different race, if, like uh, it might not much vary in European and uh, because they're all Caucasian based. But if you talk about mine, Asian and Caucasian and Mongoloid, like uh, Chinese, these three will be totally different from each other. Ok. Eh, él está haciendo un estudio en su país sobre cuánto es el grosor del tejido blando en cada uno de estos puntos. Es importante que cada país tenga sus propios trabajos, ya que por temas de raza muchas veces no es comparable, eh, por ejemplo, los datos que se tienen entre Asia, Europa y Latinoamérica. Now, uh, what are the problems faced in categories? Now, you have to keep in mind what a, uh, there might be shrinkage because you have to know the thickness, so how you have to calculate you have to have a data for your own country. I'm talking which I faced. Mm -hmm. Getting a data was very difficult because the bodies are bloated. The bodies are, because you, you tend to get a CT done of a dead body or you have a pin method, which is there. Pin you will not be allowed because ethical issues are there. But uh, then uh, the, the, the body is placed in a, in a horizontal manner. Whereas when you stand, the, there is difference. Then there is bloating, there is drying. Then there is muscle tone shrinkage after death. So you have to keep in mind that what data you are getting might be, you know, really not ap applicable. Okay. Eh, el problema de trabajar con cadáveres es de que muchas veces el tejido se encoge, hay pérdida de, de la musculatura, eh, están embalsamados, están desecados, eh, y en, incluso la posición horizontal del cadáver modifica el grosor del tejido. Entonces tenemos que tener en cuenta de que quizás no estamos recogiendo datos muy precisos si es que estamos trabajando en cadáveres. So it's the dead body methods uh, are not uh, not that good. I feel these methods which are there are not good. This are better. The ultrasound and the CT scan are much better. But you know how ethical issues are. You will not be allowed to work. Like I proposed a project in my university. It was shot down there and then because I wanted to get a CT done. Uh, now I have really modified it. It is for individuals who are actually getting it done and I'm taking data from there. But otherwise, if you just want CT done for having a thickness, you will not be allowed. Okay. Este, él dice que en verdad es mejor aplicar estos métodos en vivos. Cuando él quiso aplicarlo en su universidad, él quería tomar una tomografía de cada uno de, de, de sus sujetos de estudio. El problema era de que no le iban a permitir tomar una tomografía de, de cada uno de ellos. Entonces, lo que ha hecho es, cada persona que se va a tomar una tomografía, eh, él está trabajando con ellas y, y no al revés, ¿no? Uh... Most appropriate might be this MRI scan. Now in my country, this is one of the breakthrough study which I always uh, use the data from. This is Daisy Sani's, uh, she's an anatomy person. 
who did a study at six o'clock. Uh, who did this study, and then uh, I I suppose because reconstructions are happening in Peru, so I feel that you know you might be having a very good database as well, and especially when uh, you have a a, a Caucasian base. Ah, okay. Eh, este es uno de los trabajos en estrellas en los que él él se basa, en que habla de cuál es el, el grosor del tejido dentro de, de India y en el y en ese trabajo se basan muchos otros trabajos para poder hacer la reconstrucción. And uh, you have to keep in mind in living individuals, these are the factors which might influence the thickness of the face as well. Mm, yeah. Estos son Sorry. Mm. sorry, sorry. No, please go ahead. Ok. Eh, estos son los, los factores que tenemos que tener en cuenta que pueden modificar el grosor del tejido en los individuos. Very important. Uh, for, especially, you know, uh, whole, whole life uh, you are right, trying to, especially if I am I'm quoting it, especially males and females try to mask their age, which might be very difficult for us if you have got a Botox done If you got hair transplant done, hair implant done, for a for a person who's rebuilding, it might be very difficult to really go about <laughs> getting a thing done because everybody is getting a Botox injections. They are getting. Uh, uh, I'm just telling you that we play with age, and that's what is difficult nowadays to really judge what the age is right now because wrinkling, uh, the 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 mm -hmm. wrinkling, the, the horizontal wrinkling, or the mucobuck, the, these folds which are there actually decide, or the vertical height. The fold which is there is going for a, for a person like me, it, it actually decides uh, how we put an age in it. Okay. Eh, hay un problema cuando tratamos de estimar la edad facial solo mirando, ya que actualmente todos usan botox, todos se, se trasplantan el cabello y eso modifica la, la edad que nosotros vemos, ¿no? Entonces es un poco difícil de acertar ya que todos están haciendo estos retoquitos. So I quote, uh, correct amount of facial fat at correct places decides your youthfulness of face. Eh, entonces, eh, en verdad, no, actualmente no hay un estándar para ver eh, el, cuán joven es una cara, ya que esto es modificable por muchas variables. So you have to know the dynamics of aging as, as well. So we are, I have built up my case now. Uh, if you have to know the triangle, this, this, if you see there is a change in the, uh, uh, there is a significant change which is there uh, in, the, in, the, in the triangle which is there you're seeing. And we play with that, the inverted and the vertical triangle, triangle which you see. Ok. Eh, lo que sí tenemos que saber la dinámica de, del envejecimiento. Él usa la técnica del triángulo en la que eh, podemos ver cómo el envejecimiento, primero, al inicio nuestro triángulo tiene una forma y al final termina de, de esta otra forma en los adultos mayores. So these are, are, are tools, are toys which we play with. A cranio mm -hmm. for a craniophore or a, or a vernier caliper or a, a, a sliding caliper. These all are required when you are doing a, planning a study on various matrices, various databases which you want to establish from the skulls available in your museum. Okay. Eh, cuando se va a trabajar en cráneos, estas son parte de las herramientas que vamos a usar. Muchos de ellos son calipers. Eh, porque se va a tratar de hacer un estudio en el que se van a reunir eh, bases de datos eh, respecto a estas medidas. So, uh, people do ask, I have traveled around with met many people doing forensic art and science. Uh, it's not about, uh, you know, uh, I am trying this, I am trying that, I am doing study on this. I see people doing lots of, lots and lots of things. I suggest take one branch and become master in it because it's not how many kicks you have done. It is one kick which you practice so many times is which is important. Okay. Eh, lo que él recomienda es de que nosotros debemos coger una rama y hacernos expertos en esa rama, ya que no importa si nosotros debemos hacer 100 tipos de golpes, lo que importa es que nosotros seamos los mejores haciendo un, al menos un tipo de golpe. So this is, might be the definition. I'm not going to the definition of uh, what a forensic approximation is, but I'll rather go 
in telling you what exactly happens when uh, you have an unrecognized skeleton given to you. So uh, 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 instead of me reading out, you can read out what happens here. Okay. Eh, lo que él no nos va a hablar de la definición de, de aproximación facial, pero sí nos quiere mostrar este flujograma de qué pasa cuando llega un esqueleto que no es reconocido. Okay, uh, now, uh, since once you have a, a body which is established, like, you know, you have a body which is uh, uh, sent to you for facial reconstruction, how to go about? Now, methods which are there might be 2D or 3D. 2D means you will get a, you can take a skull, so, uh, there is one method of superimposition, which is there if you have a, uh, a dead, uh, you know, uh, if you have a suspect or if you have, a, if you have some kind of a, uh, a knowledge that you know this might be that you can superimpose also that's a very crude way uh, of doing it but there are 2d and 3d and 2d you have radiographical and graphical method in 3d you have uh, manual and computerized and you can see the various software one of them the maximum the best one which you are seeing is the haptic feedback which in which computer touches back you, the the earlier ones which are there are which you are building on the computer whereas this is really tactile. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you can see the various uh, uh, freeform uh, uh, me method which is there. Uh, uh, virtually, you can rebuild. Okay. Eh, hay distintos métodos para la reconstrucción facial. Esto va a depender de, también de con que finalmente si sí, vamos a tener con quién comparar, si hay algún tipo de sospecha, por ejemplo, de, de, de dónde viene este cuerpo, ¿no? Tenemos métodos 2D y tenemos métodos 3D. En el caso de los 2D tenemos las radiografías, los gráficos. En el caso del 3D son métodos eh, maravillosos que pueden tener mucha sensibilidad ya que se va trabajando capa por capa en la computadora. Si lo tienen en Instagram, podrían ver eh, cómo él eh, maneja este software. So if you see the manual method, it is having anatomical, then there is anthropometrical and combination of this. So once you have a Russian, American, and then you have a British, that is a combination method. So you have all the superpower coming here. Ok, si sí. ve el método manual, por ejemplo, eh, podemos ver que hay una combinación de distintos métodos en los que incluso podemos tener eh, eh, de Gran Bretaña, podemos tener eh, de, de Europa y vamos a tener unas eh, aproximaciones de acuerdo a cómo se vería en cada una de esas poblaciones. So, uh, workflow. First is preparation of the skull. Then you have to analyze the skull and then you have to reconstruct the skull. Okay. Para poder trabajar, ese es el flujo. Primero se prepara el cráneo, después pasa por el análisis antropológico y luego se pasa a la reconstrucción. So preparation is manual, digital, and digital manual and manual. So in manual, you have reassembling the bones which are there, fragments. You can stick them, glue them, you can fix them. You can, you have to clean them, consolidate them. You have to, there are various methods. There are lots of things involved in this, but I'm just skipping through and just telling you manual, digital, manual, and digital. So that's how you go about in digital manual. There is, you have to scan the skull and then rebuild manually on it. So you have manual where you have, do not build, you build directly on the skull or you duplicate the scale in plaster and then you rebuild it in digital manual. You duplicate it, uh, and print it and then reconstruct in okay. digital you just reconstruct it on the computer only the total okay. total este para la preparación tenemos tres tipos uno que es manual digital manual y digital totalmente en el caso de manual puede pasar por un proceso de, de limpieza de, de modelado de reconstrucción en el caso de la digital manual se hace en computadora pero se imprime esto, estos fragmentos de reconstrucción y por eso tiene la parte digital que es la computadora y la parte manual que eh, se imprimen y se reconstruyen. Y de ahí tenemos la aproximación, la preparación digital en la que solo se trabaja en computadora y no se imprime nada. So, uh, how to go about, you have, you receive a skull, you make documents about it, 
verify the seal of tampering, skull preparation, soil and tissue is removed, clean and orient. Keep that in mind, do not be overzealous and start working without checking for seal and chain of custody. Ok. Recibimos el cráneo. Tenemos que ver si tiene todos los documentos que debe, debe tener esta muestra. Eh, vemos si está eh, bien sellado. Vemos eh, cuál es la preparación que le vamos a dar al cráneo. Y finalmente todo esto tiene que estar eh, con su cadena de custodia. Now, uh, this is a skull which I, I, was, I was supposed to work on a, on a live skull which I was not allowed. Uh, in my university, so I took an Amazon, uh, maybe a, a, a $15 skull. I bought okay. it. It's, it's looking very odd. <laughs> and then I re tried to reconstruct it. And this is actually, when I was learning, this might appear for a, for a person who is not a dentist, it might appear a rocket science, you know, for them, uh, mixing of alginate, mixing of plaster. We do it every day for teeth. So we, it, was, it, was, it was very easy for me to really get a skull out of an Amazon skull. Ok. Eh, en su universidad él no tiene permitido trabajar con cráneos humanos. Entonces lo que hizo fue comprar un cráneo en, en Amazon, un cráneo así como lo ven. Eh, y se puso a, a investigar, no era cuando recién estaba aprendiendo. Entonces eh, con todas esas destrezas que tienen los odontólogos para el modelado, que es lo que hacen eh, gran parte de su trabajo diario, eh, él mismo logró eh, reconstruir un... Un, un cráneo con estas herramientas que él tenía. You have to block, you have to block the undercut, keep that in mind. Block the undercuts. Do not, uh, you know, uh, take, there are videos available online. There are videos by uh, Osgur Bulut. There is video by, uh, by the Dundee University. Go about reading, go about seeing them and learn on your own self. You have your own graph of learning. Everybody has different perception of using their hands and manipulation of material. Ok. Lo que él nos recomienda es de que, así como lo ven aquí trabajando e investigando solito de cómo, cómo hacer para esta aproximación, que veamos videos en YouTube, que nosotros mismos podemos hacer ese tipo de trabajo, pero tenemos que mirar bastantes eh, técnicas y para poder adoptar una, una nosotros. Uh, here, I would like to really acknowledge people who have really given their life in this field of science. Uh, the, one of them is the name which is down, Shadi Nad Sadr. I do not know how to pronounce that. He's from Turkey. Then you have uh, various people actually. Who, uh, Shadi Nadir is not, no more, but uh, uh, amazing science and art which they had. They are, they are forensic medicine people who have uh, spent their life with dead bodies to really establish this science. Okay. A él le gustaría honrar en estos momentos a distintos profesionales que han trabajado en esta ciencia, eh, ya que han dedicado sus vidas eh, tratando de establecer parámetros. You have to orient the skull on a Frankfurt horizontal scale, scale or, or a Krogman Walker scale. Many of the orthodontists might be knowing this. Ok. Primero se tiene que orientar el, el cráneo y nivelarlo. Eh, hay distintos métodos, como podemos ver. Uh, you have to be good at photography also if you want to do, do uh, this is uh, my uh, picture taken by me in front of oh. my, my uh, in front of my room. If you see, this is called as bouquet effect. Now what do you happen is that the closer parts are uh, very clear, whereas the behind part are uh, dizzy. If you see uh, photography of uh, marriages, if you see photography of uh, various, uh, you know, uh, uh, celebrations, you will see that the person is appearing very clear and the behind back background is very dull Blur. because yes. you focus, you focus on, the, on the person who's near. So that's what you have to do when you're clicking a picture of a skull. Ah, okay. Eh, esta es una fotografía tomada por él. Eh, podemos ver que él usa un método llamado bokeh, que se trata en que tenemos que enfocar al momento de tomar la foto el, en el cráneo y el resto del entorno se va a ver un poco borroso, pero le va a dar este enfoque y este res, re, uh, re, va a resaltar el cráneo que es el objetivo de la foto. Así es como él las toma. 3D imaging. Now this is very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, various techniques are there. First being microscribe. microscribe. 
then is developing digital surface models, or you can do micro CT scanning or confocal microscopes, which are there. Once you tell these names, I will tell you about each one of them one by one. Okay. Eh, él nos va a hablar ahora de las imágenes en 3D. Eh, aquí vemos diferentes nombres en que él nos va a dar una definición de cada uno de ellos. Okay. okay. Micros, microscribe is Ajá, studying. The, okay, you are you are still speaking. No, no, no. Speak? Okay. Yes. Micro, microscribe studying geometry and manual landmarks. Uh, and it reads geometry. So microscribe is you put dots and it reads geometry of the surface. You put dots on the skull and it reads, the, the computer reads it. Okay. Eh, microscribe eh, se basa en, ge en geometría y se trata de poner de forma manual unos dardos y la computadora va a leer eh, esta, estas posiciones de los dardos y nos va a dar una imagen. Now, if you talk about digital surface models, you can have, okay. uh, in this, what you have is that you take multiple photographs around and then you superimpose them and create one mesh of a thing, which is, uh, uh, you have two uh, companies which are there, which are doing it. It is Proteumus and Arctic. The Arctic is Russian, Proteumus is uh, US. Okay. Uh, con respecto a las fotos de de estos modelos. Primero está eh, la fotogrametría que se basa en tomar muchas fotos y luego todas estas pasan por un software y se hace un consolidado que nos da, nos reconstruye el, el objeto del que estamos tomando las fotos. In uh, many of us might be knowing what is CT scanning, the internal bone structures which are there. Now this, what you get is either a OBJ file or STL file. Now, OBJ file is very, very large and texture one, whereas STL, the size is large and texture is also incorporated, which is not much required by you. Okay. También tiene este, microtomografías eh, que nos dan, el problema es que dan imágenes, eh, dos tipos de imágenes, pero son muy grandes, un poco difíciles de manejar, eh, por eso no, no, las, no las usa mucho. So you have to keep in mind, we will get a DICOM data and you have to convert it into OBJ or STL file. Okay. In eh, micro CT you will get in micro CT you will get DICOM data. Yeah. En el caso de la tomografía eh, microtomografía va van a tener datos DICOM. So DICOM to OBJ STL. Mm -hmm. DICOM to OBJ STL. DICOM to OBJ 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 and STL. So you will get DICOM data, which has to be, since you want to work, you cannot work on DICOM data. You have to work on OBJ or STL. So you have to convert okay. the, OB, the DICOM data to OBJ or STL. Okay. Entonces, esto, esto, estos datos DICOM deben ser transformados en OBJ o STD. STD. STL. STL. L. L. STL. L. Oh, okay. Okay. Confocal microscope, the last one which you are seeing is the... Uh -huh. This is not required much. This is required for very artistic, very small or a very uh, thing. But for a, for a person who wants to do reconstruction might not be required, but they are very specific and increased resolution, which is not required. Okay. Hey, just Dr. Tiago, uh, help us this OBG and STL. Uh, son los formatos en los que se exportan. Hmm. So uh, Thank if, you. You see the, if you see the three pictures which are there down, one of them is the smoothest one. Then you have a little rugged and then you have the rugged one. So mm -hmm. anatomy of a 3D model, any 3D model is having any 3D uh, more anatomy of a 3D model. The, the very smallest one will be having three units, 3D point. One is the vertex, then is the edge, and then is the triangle. The, uh, the, the, uh, the vertex is the smallest unit. The edge is the line connecting the two vertices and triangle is formed by three edges. I'll just repeat again. Vertex, mm -hmm. edge, and triangle. Yes. Yeah. Eh, abajo podemos ver tres imágenes. Una que tiene la superficie muy lisa, una que tiene una superficie con algunas, eh, algunas hendiduras, por decirlo así, y la tercera que tiene este, una superficie bastante rugosa. En el oh. caso de un modelo 3D, vamos a tener tres partes. El vortex, el edge, que son las líneas eh, que 
eh, entrelazan, son las líneas que se forman y el triángulo. Sí, like, just like a phone, you know, a mo mobile phone is judged by pixels. You know, number of more uh -huh. the pixels, the more, yeah. uh, the more is the resolution. More number of triangles per area, more smoother it will be. Ok. Eh, trabaja algo así como los píxeles del teléfono. Mientras tengamos más triángulos en un área, más lisa va a ser esa superficie. Entonces, eh, mientras más lisa es una superficie, mejor solución tiene. But definitely the disadvantage is the more number of triangle, the more heavier file is. Ah, y mientras más eh, triángulos tenga, eh, más pesado va a ser ese archivo. So, uh, after you have scanned it, now when you have a scanned CT of, uh, of, a, of a bone, of a, of a skull, now what you want to do is post-processing because many of the unwanted thing will be coming in this. So, uh, you have to know what post-processing is done with, post-processing is done with GOMS, there are various other uh, softwares which are available. Now talking about scanning, scanning can be of different types. There are various names which are given. You can read the names, types which are given down. Laser, laser pulse, structural light, and contact based. Okay. Cuando se escanea, eh, de todas formas tenemos que procesar esa imagen ya que muchas veces eh, hay como artefactos dentro de la imagen. Y vamos a usar diferentes, eh, diferentes softwares que son los que podemos usar, podemos ver abajo, ¿no? Laser Triangulation 3D, Scanning Technology eh, y todos los de la lista que sí. So you can scan. This is very beautiful. If you have, please download QLone on your phone. The QLone 3D scanning. You can scan small, you can teach your kids, you can teach your friends how to 3D scan, you can, a photogrammetry scanning. Uh, just go about download QLone on your on your phone and you can do 3D scanning. Very beautiful. You can scan the tooth. You What's can the name, sorry, of the Q -Lone, app? QLone Q Q 3D scanning. You can see down. QLone 3D scanning. Yeah. Eh, nos recomienda bajar esta, esta app de QLone 3, 3D scanning eh, ya que podemos hacer reconstrucciones en 3D en base a fotogrametría. Okay. Uh, Very precise ones, very important ones, very uh, crude ones are there. So you write from the GOMS is launching uh, simplest one to the complex ones. You can see down. The 3D scanner. This is the 3D scanner. Mm -hmm. for, for... Este es un escáner 3D donde podemos ver eh, que tiene una, un, tiene partes en las que son muy precisas y partes en las que eh, no... Dependiendo de cómo se va tomando la fotografía, este, hay partes que tienen más resolución y menos resolución. This is next. This is the on the right. The red one is the next engine, and on the this is the Artec Space Spider 3D scanner. Este es this otro tipo de scanner. Next engine. Uh -huh. Next engine. Next engine uh -huh. and Artec Space Spider 3D scanner. Okay. This is what I, what we use. This is very easy to use. Okay. Nos dice que esto es bastante fácil de usar. Now then you have, what you do in post-processing is cleaning, repairing, and reconstructing on post-processing. Yeah, Now, luego viene el eh, post-procesamiento, que tiene tres partes, eh, la limpieza, la reparación, y la reconstrucción. Then you have 3D scanning, then you have 3D printing. Now you have to print also. Once you have scanned it, you, if you want to do manually, then you will 3D print it. If you don't want to do it manually, you want to do it digitally, you will not 3D print it. You will do it on the computer screen only. Okay. Eh, tenemos opciones. Después de haber escaneado, podemos eh, imprimirlo y podemos ver estas imágenes eh, 3D o podemos trabajar enteramente en la computadora. Now is the anthropological. This is the most important part. I will just take 10 minutes, 5 minutes to really dis discuss this. Ok. Este, el análisis antropológico es la parte más importante. So you have, from when you, get, when you are given a skull, you have to know, you will open up, you, of course you will see the jaw, the lower jaw is uh, present and the upper jaw is present. So what you do is, you have to establish ethnicity, sex and age. Three things, if you establish, you are cutting down most of, you are, you are very close to the identity. Ok. Cuando... 
eh, es, vemos un cráneo, lo que tenemos que determinar es la edad, el sexo y la etnia. Son tres cosas muy importantes para que podamos eh, eh, enmarcarnos en nuestra investigación. So, uh, if we talk about ethnicity, uh, we'll start with uh, dentition first, sorry. We'll start with the dentition. Just simplest of the things is that you arrange the upper and the lower jaw in occlusion and establish whether it is class 1, class 2 or class 3 malocclusion. Okay. Eh, primero, al ver la dentición, vamos a ver eh, en qué eh, clase está dentro de la oclusión. Vamos a comparar la, la oclusión entre es, el maxilar superior y maxilar inferior y le damos una clasificación. Sex from skull, you know, how to, how to get the sex from a skull. Very, the easiest one uh, is this one, you know, out of the three, that ethnicity, sex and age, the easiest to get is the gender of the skull, the, the sex of the skull. Okay. Eh, entre las tres cosas que nosotros terminamos, sexo, edad y raza, lo que es sexo es lo más fácil de determinar. Aquí vemos algunos parámetros que nos da el doctor. So, uh, the sexist, if you, if you want to give uh, uh, 95% times, you are correct if you are knowing, if you are establishing from uh, the skull, the sex. Because uh, the, the, the usually, if you have an aviator-shaped, aviator-shaped uh, orbits, if you, have, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you have a heavier skull, it is male. If you have an orbital uh, aviator shape, it is female. If you have a prominent gonial angle, it is male. If it is uh, the, the, you can see the various various ways which you can evaluate and uh, tell. If you have a styloid process which is elongated and then it is male. If it is rocking, if it is, if the, if you're keeping the skull on the table and it is rocking, it has to be a female. So you have to keep in mind various features which will be establishing male or a female skull. Ok, tenemos que tener en cuenta muchas de las características que nos pueden dar hasta un 95% de certeza de que hablamos de un hombre o de una mujer. Eh, por ejemplo, si nosotros ponemos el cráneo sobre una mesa y rueda un poco, se trata de, de una mujer. Si vemos eh, que el cráneo pesa más, tiene eh, facciones un poco más toscas y dentro de, de las características que vemos en esta tabla, eh, podemos determinar, por ejemplo, que es hombre. Eso tenemos que tenerlo en cuenta. I have, uh, uh, I have, uh, you know, merged them. I've kept in my book also. You can take a screenshot also uh, if you want. These are the various differences between a, a male and a female uh, skull. Okay. Vamos a tomarle una foto a esto. Este viene de su libro. Es cómo diferenciar el el cráneo de un hombre y una mujer. Okay. Uh, This is most important, the mandible, because this will be missing most of the times. When you have an assault or an injury or, a, or if it is the body is uh, being there in, uh, in a jungle, the first, uh, bo first bone to dislodge is the mandible. Most of the time you'll get just the skull and not the mandible. Uh -huh. Acá también tenemos eh, lo que es con respecto a la mandíbula. Muchas veces se pierde ya que es bastante, eh, eh, se sale del cráneo fácilmente y solo nos llega la parte de, del cráneo sin la mandíbula, ¿no? Pero igual tenemos que tenerlo en cuenta. Now, uh, you have to mark on the skull when you are interpreting the traits. Keep that in mind either by just by a nuchal crest or a mastoid process or a supraorbital margin or a supraorbital ridge or a mental eminence, you can really tell uh, what will be the, uh, uh, the size, how the, how the chin will be. Like if you have a prominent mental eminence, you will have a, a dimple here. If you have a very, very big uh, mastoid process, the ear size is going to be enlarged. If you have, mm -hmm. a, the, if you have this uh, uh, zygomatic arch extending backwards, a lot of them, then it will be more towards male. So you have to keep in mind either It is a neutral female or a hyper female. It is neutral male or a hyper male. So you have to keep the, you have to label it because while reconstruction, you have to reflect it in your reconstruction. Okay. Eh, aquí en esta tabla vemos algunas características sobre el cráneo. Por ejemplo, eh, si tenemos una prominencia mentoniana gruesa, podemos decir de que eh, 
el mentón va a ser mucho más grande. Si tenemos un proceso mastoideo también grueso, podemos ver eh, que el tamaño de... Podemos suponer que el tamaño de la oreja es un poco más grande. Entonces, eh, muchas de estas características nos dan las características también del tejido que van, van a tener encima. También tenemos que mirar esta tabla y eh, clasificarlo en eh, hipermujer, mujer, neutral, hombre o hiperhombre. Y son los rasgos que vamos a tener cuando examinamos el cráneo. Again, this is the chapter in my book. I will not promote it more. It will more, uh, appear more of a commercial, uh, uh, you know, uh, commercial uh, lecture rather than a, uh, a scientific one. So I'll no, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Eh, okay. Nos está promo nos dice, creo que estoy promocionando mi libro más que más que dar la charla, pero bueno. <laughs> está muy bien. Está muy bien. Está perfecto. Gracias. Okay. Uh, Now, uh, how to decide ancestry? Now, this is the toughest part because uh, we are intermingling. I can go and stay in Peru. I can, uh, you know, get a citizenship of US. I can become a US citizen, say sometime. Now it is a little troublesome, but then I can become a citizen of Europe or some other country. So there is intermingling. But for an anthropologist, social and ethnic anthropological groups are usually four types, Caucasian, Negroid, Mongoloid, and Asteroid. You should know there are skulls which are divided into only and only four types and most importantly, three types. Because Austri these, uh, the, uh, the last one which I'm talking, Astroloid, might not be that much because they are, they are a little primitive ones. They might not be there. But then uh, definitely you can find a Caucasian, Peru, South America, Negroid, African countries, Mongoloid, Asian and Chinese. Mm -hmm. Eh, bueno, aquí podemos ver una representación de lo que sería cómo son las poblaciones antropológicas y que nos dan, eh, que podemos eh, inferir de acuerdo a, a los cráneos, ¿no? Pero eh, definitivamente eh, aquí nos faltarían algunos estudios con respecto a eh, el tipo mestizo, eh, de repente eh, el tipo de, de, de diferentes países, ¿no? Entonces queda un poco primitivo, nos faltan más estudios, pero tenemos que tener en cuenta de que esto va a producir gran variabilidad a la hora de que vamos a examinar un cráneo. So, Caucasian, Negroid, and Mongoloid skull. You should be establishing what kind of features they are There are very important ones. What kind of a root, what kind of a nose will develop, what kind of a eye will develop, what kind of a prominence of zygomatic arch will be there, how the orbits will be, how protruding the eyeballs will be, the, how the ears will be placed. All is decided on ethnicity as well, like from age and ethnicity as well. Yeah. Eh, aquí podemos ver los tres tipos más importantes. Y si bien como ya hablamos, hay mucha variabilidad, Sí tenemos que escribir cómo encontramos y dónde está situado el cráneo que estamos examinando, ¿no? ¿Qué características tiene? Por ejemplo, eh, ¿qué tal son las prominencias eh, del maxilar? ¿Cuál es la forma de los globos oculares? Entre otros, ¿no? Eso es parte de la descripción que tenemos que dar. You can take a screenshot if you want. Pueden tomar una imagen si desean. So, uh, very important to uh, see. Uh, I usually have a cranial index done because that will decide what kind of a face will be there. Cranial index and the facial index should be done. Cranial index is maximum skull width about the length. That is a cranial index. I, that it decides either you are a dolicocephalic, a metallic, uh, metallical, that is a medium headed, then you have a brachiocephalic. Okay. Eh, es importante tomar la, eh, el índice craneal eh, que se da eh, de acuerdo al ancho y largo del cráneo y eso nos va a dar una, nos va a permitir identificar eh, qué tipo de, en, ante qué tipo de cráneo estamos. Acá tenemos sí. las medidas que se sacan de, de este índice. So you do a cranial index and a facial index. Very simple, you have a... Either you have a dolicocephalic, metallocephalic, or brachiocephalic, and then you have a uroproscopic, leptoscopic, or a mesoproscopic uh, uh, oh. face. 
Ok, también se saca un índice facial, eh, ambos son bastante fáciles de manejar y eh, de acuerdo a, a qué rango nos sale, vamos a eh, decir si es europroso, la verdad no sé la traducción de esto en español, <risa> pero nos va a dar eh, cada uno de estos el rango determinado. So, when, once you have a facial index and a cranial index, you will be able to establish you have to get a a long face or a, or a short face or a medium face. So you will have what kind of a face you want to develop, uh, a long face, a middle face or a short face. So you can see uh, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. eh, por ejemplo, eh, de acuerdo a esas medidas que tomamos, podemos ver si tiene una cara larga, una cara mediana o una cara pequeña. Y eso es parte de la identificación. I'm sorry I have to use ladies to get your attention, but that's exactly... <laughs> Uh, uh, you know what exactly we look at the face when we are looking at. Okay. Eh, dice que se disculpa de haber puesto eh, damas para llamar nuestra atención, pero eh, justo en estas fotografías se ve exactamente lo que él está buscando. Age from skull, very important. So you have various sutures which are there on the skull, which are to be read. They fuse at a specific age. Ok. En, de acuerdo a, al cráneo, también podemos ver estas suturas y nos puede ayudar a determinar la edad. Uh, here you have to keep in mind, it might vary from country to country. Many of the sutures might vary country to country because of the nutrition status, as well as the stature, as well as the environment which is there. Ok. Tenemos que tener en cuenta de que hay bastante eh, variabilidad de acuerdo a la población en la que estemos, pero estos son los datos eh, estándares que, que tenemos de acuerdo a la edad. So you, sh you should know how a suture closed looks like, you should rate it and then get, now talking about determining of age from mandible, the lower jaw, very important because uh, uh, it is very, very um, You know, diamorphic, it can de determine the age and sex, both, the mandible. Okay. Es importante para determinar la, la edad. También, eh, cómo eh, vemos la mandíbula y si vemos, por ejemplo, este en el mayor, en el adulto mayor, vamos a ver que tiene cierta resorción ósea. En cambio, eh, la disposición de los dientes en el niño y en el adulto son bastante diferentes. So, uh, Talking about gonial angle, I'm, I'm not going to detail, but gonial angle is also determining the um, uh, age of an individual. Sex of an individual as well as age. So talking about various, uh, this is forensic facial approximation. Now, when you have done your recurs, you have done the preparation, you have done the uh, analysis. Now, what you do is actually what you came here for, FFA, that is forensic facial approximation. Después de haber pasado por todos los pasos previos, ahora sí vamos a entrar a lo que es aproximación facial forense. Uh, then is uh, methodology. How to go about, you have done the, determine the six or N age, you have put the depth markers, which are there, you have, you have to keep an eye, you have to put an eye, then you have to connect those markers and develop photo, uh, various facial structures and do the photography. So manual method has these, these many things which you have to do. Determine the age sex, putting the depth markers, placement of depth markers, setting of prosthetic eye, connecting the tissue depth markers, and developing face structures and photography. Okay. Esta es la metodología manual eh, que se realiza en los cráneos. Eh, primero se determina sexo y edad. Después se ponen los, eh, los marcadores. Se ponen eh, ojos protésicos. Eh, se conectan estos marcadores con, se saca una profundidad, perdón, de estos marcadores eh, con respecto al tejido blando que se presume que tiene, se desarrollan las características eh, faciales y se toman fotografías. Any reconstruction, I can see one of the pictures which is there, if you see, that is of reconstruction uh, at your end. Now this reconstruction is of Horio. Awari Mary Queen, which is from Peru, which is this reconstruction happened. I have uh, specifically put uh, National Geographic on it because it's under not copyright. So you have to really 
uh, you can really search on National Geographic your reconstruction of a queen, 1200 year old, in your country. Oh, thank you. Eh, aquí nos muestra la foto de, de una reina de, de nuestro país que fue eh, reconstruida para National Geographic. Dice que deberíamos buscarla. Various methods I've already described. Now you put up uh, markers. The most important and the most toughest thing to reconstruct is the nose. You have to mm -hmm. really, these are the various methods. You can go about reading. This is uh, uh, very easily available. If you want, you can take from me also the article, how to reconstruct okay. the nose. Una de las partes eh, que tiene bastante más eh, dificultad es la reconstrucción de la nariz. Tenemos diferentes métodos. Eh, aquí podemos ver eh, los autores de cada uno de ellos y eh, tenemos que examinar cada uno de ellos cuando queramos hacer una reconstrucción eh, de la nariz, ya que es bastante retador. Just two names you have to keep in mind when you're searching. Christopher Ryan and Gresomov. Again, Gresomov. please. Two names. Two names okay. when you're searching, searching in Google for nose will okay. be Christopher Ryan, Christopher Ryan 1, and yeah. Gresomov. 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 Russian. Gresomov. Gresomov. Yeah, son dos nombres que tenemos que tener en cuenta cuando buscamos eh, sobre nariz en Google. Again, please. <laughs> Okay, the names, I will repeat yes. the name. Christopher Please. Ryan, Christopher Ryan, and Christopher the second Ryan. name, and the second will be Gresimov, Gresimov, the Russian, 1971, his article is there. The name is there, okay. the method one, the method one, method one, okay. Gresimov, Gresimov. Ese, ese, ese que nos está señalando el doctor. Okay, so okay, thank we, you. welcome. Uh, the, uh, the various no's, uh, this is actually reconstruction on the, on, on, the, on the computer, which is there, if you see the various, uh, how the intersecting points are met and how the nose is placed uh, on a computer, uh, on, a, on a 3D uh, reconstruction is given down. Uh, really complex, but then uh, if you are knowing the first, I suggest you should understand how to go about doing 2D, then go about doing manual 3D, and then attempt, um, you know, uh, at computerized the 3D. At the end, computerized 3D, if you really want to learn. But I think, um, um, even the 3D manual is doing a great job. Okay. Eh, aquí podemos ver algunas imágenes de cómo se realiza la reconstrucción de forma digital. Eh, lo que recomienda es de que primero pasemos por la reconstrucción en base al 2D, luego pasemos a la parte manual 3D. Y por último, ya podríamos dedicarnos a la parte que tiene que ver con solo computadora. Pero es necesario que pasemos por cada una de esas etapas. Uh, I have an issue. I, can I take five minutes more? I will be done. I'll just take five minutes more. Just take permission. Claro. Yes. Yes, of course. Okay. So, uh, what is the shortcoming? Shortcoming is there is insufficient data of your own population. Second is that it is very subjective methodological inconsistencies then is lack of standardization of scientific method. These three are the most uh, shortcomings of this uh, reconstruction, <laughs> especially uh, if you are ill-equipped with softwares, if you are ill-equipped, if you are not like, I, I was always, I, I'm a doctor, I was trained in bodies, I was never trained in computer. So I had to really struggle to really get uh, myself trained. Okay. Eh, tenemos algunos problemas eh, con respecto a esto de la aproximación facial forense. Primero, tenemos muy pocos datos con respecto al grosor del tejido blando. Después, eh, el problema es de que tiene una naturaleza bastante subjetiva y el método suele ser muchas veces inconsistente. Y por último, hay poca eh, estandarización y eh, validación de este método como método científico. Entonces, eh, nos faltan muchos más estudios para poder hacer esto de un método replicable y confiable. Okay, the 3D world. Now, uh, very fascinating, very difficult, but the most, uh, the best results come here. Okay. Aquí vamos a hablar del mundo digital, eh, que es bastante fascinante. If you see on, in my hand, the equipment which is there is the 3D tactile back. That is the uh, haptic, the, the haptic, 
the haptic feedback which is there this one which is in my hand what's the name sorry haptic haptic the computer touchback you can really ah, touch okay. ah okay lo que podemos ver en su mano es eh, una especie de puntero eh, que tiene que ver con la computadora y ahí él va modelando, si se dan cuenta, en la pantalla que tiene eh, frente a él. I have compiled various softwares on which you can do a reconstruction. I have tried uh, Blender, I have tried Haptic Feedback. Aquí ya nos ayudó el doctor Barrera, nos dice que eh, es Haptic Device. Así se llama el aparato que tiene el doctor. Justo es lo que nos está mostrando. So you have Touch X and Touch, the right one which you see is what we have worked on. Touch X. Very, touch very, X. very, very sensitive, very, very beautiful devices on which you can do the reconstruction, where you want to add flesh, where you want to add, and then you can take a print. Ok. Eh, aquí lo que nos muestra el doctor es que él tiene el Touch X, que es bastante sensible. Se puede eh, ir añadiendo este, eh, de forma muy precisa la, lo que sería el tejido blando en las reconstrucciones y luego esto pasaría a impresión. Now, you require, why do you require it? These are the advantages of uh, 3D over 2D. That is, it is highly subjective, inaccurate, time consuming and requires artistic talent. So these are shortcomings. Uh, I didn't catch that, please. These are the shortcomings of reconstruction. That it is very, I've, I've already discussed that. Oh, okay. This is being subjective, inaccessible to remote areas. Like, you know, if you do not have a software, then it is time consuming and requires artistic talent as well. Okay. Uh, estos son algunos tópicos que, que le gustaría tocar al respecto de estos métodos 3D. El problema es de que es muy subjetivo, es inaccesible en zonas remotas, consume bastante tiempo y requiere mucho talento artístico. You know, some of my cases, how I have developed, how reconstructions were done, I'm just skipping through many of them are very, very uh, sensitive ones. Uh, Uh, various reconstructions were done. Okay. Uh, Nos estamos mostrando algunos casos que ha trabajado para la reconstrucción. Many of the assaults are uh, in a closed setup are due to domestic violence. They uh, just very simple. And if you see, I have specifically involved an orthodontist for the malocclusion which was present, which actually was very important when I was Uh, developing it. Orthodontist. Okay. This, is a, this is a report by an orthodontist, Priyanka Kapoor, who has given mm -hmm. me a report that, uh, you know, how to go about um, uh, reconstructing. She gave me hints how to reconstruct 2D. Ok. Eh, aquí, por ejemplo, vemos un informe de, de un odontólogo eh, que da bastantes eh, puntos, bastantes pistas para eh, que él pueda hacer esta reconstrucción. Okay, now I'll finish it in one minute. One minute I'll take. Okay. Um, one is skull chart. You should have, whenever skull comes to you, you should have a skull chart that, you know, this is the age, this is the sex. There is, it is available. You can download it or you can take from me. It is very easy to make your own self chart of, a computer, of a, your own uh, database for your own self. Then there are uh, Aviso and other softwares which are available like, which, are huge, which can be used to convert DICOM to STL, which I told you, which is required because you will, getting, you will be getting a CT scan file, mm -hmm. right? So you have to, that, that comes in a, a, a DICOM. So you have to convert yes. it into STL. You require Aviso software for that. For post-processing, you can use GOMS. You want me to um, uh, one by one tell you so that you can yes. repeat? Okay, skull okay. chart is available. Skull chart for knowing, you should note down about the skull, first of all. Okay, deberíamos tener una ayuda de memoria eh, que diga, por ejemplo, ¿qué debemos saber sobre un cráneo? ¿Qué datos deberíamos tomar? Okay, Aviso, Aviso, the second number. The Aviso software is used for converting DICOM to STL. Okay, el software uh, Aviso es para eh, transformar estos archivos 
Daikon, que estaban en lo que revisamos sobre tomografía, a los archivos que pueden ser trabajados. Post-processing is done on GOMS. Is what, sorry? Post-processing, the number three. Post-processing is done on GOMS software. Ah, ok. El post-procesamiento eh, tiene que ver con el, los softwares eh, de huesos. Nose is done by two names, Ryan, Christopher Ryan and Grissomos. Nose. Yeah. Eh, con respecto a la nariz, tenemos que buscar a Christoph Ryan y a Gerasimov. The name of the clay which you can use to re reconstruct is Shavnant NSP 3kg. 3kg pack is available. So, name of the claim is C-H-A-V-A-N-T, Shavnant. C-E-H. C-H-A-V-A-N-T. Name of okay. the clay. Uh, Doctor, could you clay. write it down, please, then, oh, maybe? Sure, sure. I will, I will type it. I will type it. Okay. Nos va a decir el nombre de la arcilla eh, que, que usa para la reconstrucción. Okay. And then mm -hmm. is uh, the facial aging chart which is available. You can go about asking a skin specialist for a facial chart because he knows wrinkling very well because he's always injecting Botox in it. Mm -hmm. eh, también deberíamos tener una ayuda memoria Respecto al envejecimiento facial, podemos preguntarle a algún dermatólogo o a algún cirujano estético, porque ellos tienen bastante en cuenta las arrugas de la cara para, para aplicar then, botox. Then is placement of the eye. The placement of the eye, you have to buy a 24 mm ball of a doll, which is available from Amazon or somewhere. Okay. A doll, a doll, eh, a doll. Ajá, uh -huh, yes. A toy, eh, a toy, a toy. Ajá. Eh, de ahí es importante colocar eh, estos ojos eh, de repuesto. Él usa una, una pelota de, de juguete que compra por Amazon de 24 milímetros. Glass Wagon, G-L-A-S-V-A-G-A-N, on Amazon. Glass Wagon, G-L-A-S-V-A-G-A-N. Glass Wagon is the company which is manufacturing, manufacturing 24 mm balls for eye. Ok. Eh, nos está dejando el nombre de, de la compañía que manufactura estos, estos reemplazos de, de ojos. DICOM to soft, DICOM, this is a, how you convert from DICOM to, um, you know, import it into your reconstruction. This is a uh -huh. picture. You're converting Esta, es the una, to... Esta es una imagen de cómo se ve en DICOM y eh, que después va a ser exportada. Eh, para, para eh, poder trabajar y después para hacer impresa. That's how uh, my room looks like. That's how I want my house to be. Skulls everywhere. <laughs> Eso es, es como le gustaría que sea su casa, eh, con cráneos por todos lados. My kids are scared. I have become some kind of a voodoo artist. <laughs> Mis hijos tienen miedo de que me haya convertido en un artista voodoo. So it's not, uh, dream is not uh, the thing you see in sleep, but it is a thing that doesn't let you sleep. Acá nos deja una frase. Dice que el, los sueños no son lo que uno ve mientras duerme, sino eh, son los que, ay, sino es lo que no te deja dormir. I conduct workshops on rugoscopy charts, on age estimation. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer questions now. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Eh, nos mostró algunos, algunos workshops que él hace y estarí, acá él nos deja sus datos. Está feliz de poder contestar nuestras preguntas. Mil gracias. De verdad, muy, muy bonita tu presentación, me gustó realmente. A ver, por favor, los micros están abiertos para los que van a preguntar. Marielita, tradúceme. Uh -huh. uh, thank you so much for your uh, presentation. Uh, it was beautiful. We are really pleased to have you here. Thank you so much. I will, I will be more than happy to answer questions now, if any. Uh -huh. Yes. Dice que está muy feliz de poder contestar sus preguntas, si es que hay alguna. 
Eh, sí, yo tengo una. Buenas, eh, doctor. Yo soy de República Dominicana. Qué pena que dentro de su estudio no esté la raza mestiza todavía, que es la raza que, que, que predomina aquí en mi país. Eh, muy interesante. Me encanta eso porque tengo mucha habilidad con las manos, pero eh, se necesita de más tiempo para poder eh, aprenderlo mejor o, o entenderlo mejor. La pregunta que yo tengo es, eh, usted dijo sí que, que el método es un poco... Eh, no se ha validado porque por, por el grosor del tejido blando. Entonces, cuando usted tiene un, una cabeza que ya está esqueletizada, que no tiene nada, eh, eh, Marve, me paro para que le pregunte. No, 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 sigue, estoy, a, estoy escribiendo. Ok, eh, que está esqueletizada. Eh, yo sé que mencionó puntos específicos en los huesos, pero como lo que yo no entiendo de qué forma yo puedo ir colocando el grosor del tejido blando en cada una de esas partes óseas. Doctor, I put, well, she said, uh, Dr. Mimi, it's from uh, ¿De dónde es usted, doctora? Dominican Mimi? Republic. Uh, Dominican Republic. Uh, so, uh, she says that the method is having problems because that uh, we have not a uh, standard for thickness of soft tissue. Uh, that's one. That's, that's, more, that's most important, actually. You have, uh -huh. to have, you have to have data for your own population. That is where you start with. You have to have. Uh -huh. And... A country like me, mine, my, if we talk about my country, my country, the most uh, troublesome thing is that we are heterogeneous. We are Mongoloids, we are Caucasian, we are, uh, we are uh, 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 Mongoloids. You go in every 40 kilometers in my country, it is the, the language changes, the food changes, uh, the, the lifestyle changes, the climate changes. So even the face will change. So that is where you come in. Where you come in, you have to really build up as per your knowledge, art and science. If you have more of art, you are wrong. If you have more of science, you will be wrong, surely. Okay. Eh, de la primera parte nos dice que debemos empezar teniendo estudios de cada uno de los países, ya que cada país es eh, bastante diverso, ¿no? Ahora voy a traducir la segunda parte. Uh, what Dr. Mimi doesn't understand is how the soft tissue is placed in these markers. Okay. Uh, if, if what you have is the thickness which you come. I have uh, Dr. Michael W. Street with us. He is uh, one of the veterans in 2D reconstruction. I am really welcome him. Uh, namaste from India, Dr. Street. Está saludando a, a un icono de, de okay. la, okay. la construcción okay. Okay. 2D. Okay, so you have 11 points if you're doing manual in 10 points in the midline and 11 points on the lateral. So you have to really reconstruct either manually or with clay, with clay, which is, I told you, a chavanant, mm -hmm. 3 kg clay, which you put. You have to really go, for, go and look for uh, videos online and you will see how the nose how the face, how the placement of the markers is there and you try to connect, smoothen out and then you have an age written on that because you have, right when you are doing analysis of the skull, you, you, you build up on that and then you go about, I, I suggest you should go about first developing individual organs first, you know, develop an eye, ear. I have done that. I was trained like that. I tried to build various types of nose. So you can really fix nose then. If you, you try to develop different type of ear, Then you try to do it 2D as well as 3D. It is totally different when you do it 3D. Because in 2D, you are imagining and doing it on a paper or a, or a thing. Whereas 3D is you have to think three-dimensionally how it's going to, going to look like. So 3D will be, to, and you have to repeat it on the other side as well. It is not that one ear is big and the other ear is small. It happens very easily on a computer because you have to just pick it, do a mirror image and keep it here. 
but in reconstruction manually you have to build it yourself so you have to really go about seeing videos is not enough you have to do it yourself with hand first okay uh, dr chabi uh, welcome dr street how are you i'm sorry to interrupt but you know i was listening to dr chabi and he's right i think it's easier to walk before you run doing the 3d digital reconstructions almost like running and i started out doing um 2d and it's it's easier maybe to get pictures of skulls and bring them into a program like Photoshop, which is a program a lot of people are um, familiar with, and then just taking elements of photographs and fitting them to the skull and blending them together in the different layers and such. Gotcha. Okay, thank you, thank you for for your intervention, doctor. Eh, lo que eh, en resumen lo que nos dijo el doctor eh, Amán es de que tenemos 10 puntos frontales y 11 puntos laterales. Entonces, eh, él nos invita a buscar en YouTube cómo, cómo es que se aplica la arcilla de forma manual en cada uno de sus puntos. Normalmente él va por, por segmentos y después ya los va uniendo. Lo que nos dice el Dr. Street es de que eh, esto es como correr, alguien te lo puede describir, pero si no lo haces tú mismo, eh, no vas a pasar por la experiencia. Entonces, lo que nos dice es que nosotros mismos este, pongamos las manos en la arcilla y, y reconstruyamos y empecemos a tratar de reconstruir nuestros propios, eh, nuestras propias caras. Él quedó de, de decir el nombre de, de la arcilla que él utilizaba. Sí. Could you write it down, the, the name of the clay, please? It, it was really difficult to... Ok. Uh, yes. You have a group, you have a WhatsApp group, right? Yes. It will be, post it will be posted to you, don't worry. Ah, thank you. Eh, dice que lo va a poner por el grupo de WhatsApp. Ok, pues entonces dile a él que en base al pensamiento que él puso, que su cultura me apasiona y que aunque no me quite el sueño, para mí es un sueño el yo ir a la India. She loves the phrase that you put at the, at the end. So uh, she wants to tell you that a, a dream for her is to travel to your country. Sure, Iremos juntas, welcome. Mimi. Sola most no te welcome. vas a ir, ¿ah? ¿eh? <laughs> Definitivamente el respeto con que hablan, eh, o sea, que para mí es algo como como misterioso, como que me gustaría conocer. Eh, you're, you're, you're most you're most welcome. Only thing is, don't end up in 14 days of quarantine in my country. <risa> Dice que eh, están bienvenidas, pero por favor, este, no terminen eh, ahorita con 14 días de cuarentena en su país. <risa> Dile a él que Walt Disney dijo también que si lo puedes soñar, lo puedes tener. Entonces, ya yo lo estoy soñando y yo voy a ir. Ok, uh, Walt Disney said, uh, if you can dream it, you can have it. So, she's dreaming it. Anybody else? Alguien más tiene alguna pregunta para el doctor Amán? Marvel, creo que algunos escribieron por el por este por el grupo o ya lo mencionaron. Creo que sí, ¿no? Uh, hay varios comentarios. Uh -huh. uh, la mayoría en inglés de agradecimiento a algunos de... Uh, básicamente agradecimientos. Sí. Ah, ya. Yeah. Gracias. Uh -huh. Ah, ya. Yeah. Yeah, eh, no doctor hay... Natalie Maldonado says, Where can we find your book in Mexico? You can find my book in Mexico when I send it. You tell me, you send me your address, you will have it. <gasps> Ok. Eh, el doctor dice que le mandemos la, la dirección y él lo manda. Entonces, doc, doctor, you will have a lot of emails. Oh, no problem, no problem. I will send one and you get it photostated, all of you. <risa> dice que va a mandar uno y ya de ahí los demás lo pasan. Gracias, doctor. Muchísimas gracias, doctor Amán, de verdad. Para nosotros es un privilegio tenerlos y como dice Mimi, este, la expectativa de cómo es, 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 son ustedes, la cultura de ustedes es muy hermoso realmente, el poder verlos todos tan, tan, 
tan formales, ¿no? No es como nosotros, de repente los latinos somos demasiado cariñosos, somos muy efusivos, está Mimi, están todos los argentinos que están en esta plataforma, estamos todos los latinos que somos muy eufóricos, de repente muy emocionados por todo lo que vivimos en esta plataforma y de verdad... Este, le doy las gracias infinitas por estar con nosotros y por habernos presentado esta excelente presentación en donde de verdad, si bien es cierto, conocemos un poco de lo que es reconstrucción facial, usted nos ha dado detalle por detalle y eso, como siempre he dicho, este, ustedes, los del otro lado, no tienen ni un poquito así de ese, de repente, ese no sé cómo se diría, egoísmo de poder dar sus conocimientos a nosotros los de aquí, de América Latina, que estamos tan ávidos de conocimiento. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, Marvel, thank, you so, yes. <laughs> thank you so much for having you here. It's really uh, uh, wonderful to know Uh, what's happening there in the other side of the world. Uh, we know a little bit of facial uh, reconstruction, so we are really, we really feel uh, fortunate to have you here. It's a, it's a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine, and I'll be more than happy to connect with you on emails as well as I'm, I'm seeing your group is active, irrespective of the 24 hours, there is something going on on your group. <laughs> Thank you. Eh, Thank nos dice que él está feliz de estar aquí, de compartir con nosotros, ha visto las redes sociales, ha visto que somos un grupo muy activo y que siempre algo está pasando dentro de las 24 horas. Oh, gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Qué hermoso. Mimi, tenemos que irnos para allá. No sé cómo, pero tenemos que irnos, Mimi. Ya está decidido. Tú y yo nos vamos. <risa> Bueno, este, muchísimas gracias por entregarle su certificado de ponente al doctor Amán por su magnífica presentación el día de hoy en la conferencia virtual con el tema Forensic Facial Apro Approximation. Muchísimas gracias, doctor Amán. Y seguimos con nuestras conferencias. El viernes 18 tenemos a Honduras que nos visita esta vez para darnos una, una mirada desde el punto de vista de la odontología en Honduras con nuestra amiga Nutka Casanova que ya todas la, todos la conocemos, así es que vamos a tener este viernes 18 a Nutka dándonos un poquito de sus conocimientos de cómo se trabaja eh, en Honduras, ¿no? Entonces, este, doctora Mann, yo lo invito, de verdad, usted comentó que en su país no no este no se trabaja sobre cráneos, ¿verdad? Este, acá en el país tenemos muchos cráneos para trabajar, de verdad. Y creo que en toda Latinoamérica. Así que lo invitamos también para poder hacer un estudio. Alguna vez hemos conversado de eso, si es que no me equivoco. Este, Marvelita, traduce por favor a todos los amigos. Uh, se me, se me apagó el micrófono. Okay. Uh, Dr. Man, we are pleased to have you here to, to, we have a lot of skulls, so you can uh, teach us then. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. It was excellent having you, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bueno, ah, y tenemos la sorpresa que estábamos preparando hace tiempo, <risa> vamos a tener una conferencia, una jornada este, internacional el 17 de octubre. Están todos invitados. Marvel, por favor, tradúcenles a todos. Vamos a tener grandes ponentes internacionales y esta vez sí vamos a certificar. Tenemos el auspicio académico de la Universidad Científica del Sur, ¿no? una de las mejores universidades del Perú con un creditaje académico, entonces vamos a certificar la conferencia, la vamos a tener el 17 de octubre, de 9 de la mañana a 8 de la noche, vamos a tener invitados internacionales de primer nivel, bueno, ya todos ustedes los conocen, ¿no? Así es que los esperamos. Ok, we are, we are going to have a congress, uh, the October 17th, 
it will be with a certification and uh, is host by a scientific university. So we are having a really, really good opponents. You all know them. So uh, you're welcome to, to join us. Bueno, ahora sí, la foto final, por favor, con todos. La foto final, por favor, prendan sus cámaras para poder tomar la última foto. Y muchísimas gracias a cada uno de ustedes. Tiago, bienvenido. Katy, recién te veo, Katy. <ríe> bueno, muchísimas gracias a cada uno de ustedes por estar con nosotros. De verdad, yo sé que para algunos es muy tarde y para otros ya está amaneciendo. Muchísimas gracias a cada uno de ustedes. Bendiciones. Abrazo grande, cuídense. Nos vemos. Hasta luego. Chao, chao. Aniuka, hasta luego. Viernes, a, la, a las seis de la tarde, viernes. Estén bien. Nos vemos el viernes. Nos vemos el viernes. Bye.